live from Remax Advantage Realty in the new sound studio. Welcome to Multiple Offers, a real estate show with competing perspectives. Today, we're filling out our speculation tax forms. Put that coffee down. If you're good at something, never do it for free. How'd you get the gig? Oh, you know, they were hiring. It was only a two-week course. I will sell this house today. What are you, some kind of real estate agent? Oh, he's a realtor. There is a difference somehow. This is Multiple Offers, a real estate show. All right, guys, it is our first ever live episode while we record Multiple Offers. How stressed are you? Not really, because it's Facebook. Oh, <laughs> wow. Hi. <laughs> Gauntlet thrown. For those of you who don't know, Jeremy is a bit of a Luddite, and he tries to stay off the Facebook and the Instagram and yeah. everything, really. You just don't want to be tracked. I just want to do it every once in a while. Just I'll fold it into things every you know, yeah. once in a while. Like if you look at my page, it's usually about a year or two out of date. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so. There's, you still don't have a profile pic on Instagram. Uh, uh, on my, my Instagram? Yeah. Oh, I don't. Don't we have a? Don't we have one on on New West guys? You have a team one, but oh. your individual one because I tag you and stuff all the time when we're doing things. Is it a picture of the band? It's just <laughs> <laughs> no. That was a few a picture years of ago. The band. Um. Yeah, Matt, how you feeling? We're going live. We are. We live. are. We are on the line. <laughs> <laughs> I'm. I am nervous. I am. I feel. Yeah. Diff- I feel different this episode than our usual. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Yeah, I'm usually because there's pretty... a camera pointed at you and people. Yeah, watching. I don't know. And the amazing thing is, we don't really cut anything out of our shows. Almost never. Yeah. So it's, it's usually a guest if we have to. So cut I stuff have out. no good reason to be nervous. Yeah. But there's just as a new element here. So fair we'll enough. See. Well, for our listeners, if you're watching it right now and you didn't download the podcast, um, Matt and Jer are going to be filling out their speculation tax forms, and we're going to be. Talking about how easy or frustrating that is, and we're also going to give you a bunch of information about the speculation tax uh, that you need to know. Uh, This might go well. It might go horribly wrong. (laughs) We do not have a question of the week so far. What our hope is is that if uh, somebody watching the live broadcast can come in with a question of the week, we can address that when we get to it. A little experiment. So if you've got questions, please help us out. Even if you don't have questions, maybe just make one up so that – we can we can go from there. The first question could be, what is what are you talking about? Yeah. Um, so should, should we just get right into the news? What time is it? Yeah. Yeah. Sounds about right. All right. We can do the news. I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. I got a news flash for you, Walter Cronkite. I am enlightened. Do it live! I can, I'll write it and we'll do it live! This is Multiple Offers, a real estate show. So our new segment is pretty obvious, I think, at this point. <laughs> what could you possibly be talking about today, What's Matt? What's new? <laughs> oh, maybe because a lot of our listeners... There are people listening live right now and and may experience this not just through the regular podcast channel. So maybe we should introduce ourselves because normally we don't do that. But uh, Matt, who's going to go take us through the news, is one half of the New West guys, Matt Brabin. Thank you. Um, Well, there's an S. Matt Brabin's. uh, Just feeling the nerves. Yeah, and uh, his sidekick, Jeremy Ray, (laughs) is with us as well. Um, this and Jared does not have hello. an ego. He didn't flinch at that at all. No, I, I thought I, I, I was gaslighting him a little bit there. <laughs> oh, but. what was? What did you say? Oh, so he wasn't even listening. That was the problem. <laughs> yeah. Hi, hi, Facebook. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's been a while. Um, and and uh, I am Jeff McLennan from Real Estate New West, and uh, I'll be the guy getting ganged up on because you guys are a team. And uh, you want to get your dad in here? Yeah, I'm going to call dad. Dad, <laughs> these guys are picking on me. <laughs> I'll be right back. Yeah. <laughs> so with that out of the way, uh, Matt Brabbins, our resident fact guy. What do you got I, for us? I usually do the news segment. So the news is that we have just re- received our notice in the mail. And you can see, I put mine right here, and it says, action required. Looks really official. Make your declaration for the speculation and vacancy tax. What's that? What's that? <laughs> and... 
the reason why they threw in the vacancy part is because they realized soon after announcing this speculation tax that the most of the people it would apply to uh, weren't speculators. Oh, they, they were BC residents. Makes sense. Yeah, they're BC residents who own and use their homes, but they don't use them all the time. The, yeah, this happened. I've got a client who works up north, and he goes back and forth, and he's definitely not a speculator. He uses both those homes, but he's got to he's got to deal with this. Yeah, and the government decided, like, no, this actually applies to you too. Yeah, we no, we we said we were going to be punishing foreigners and speculators, but it turns out actually we just don't want vacant homes. That's their new, <laughs> that's their new message. Yeah. Uh, so a lot of people have been hearing about it. Uh, the basic premise is that they're going to roll it out. They're going to kind of ease it out for the first couple of years. And you were noticing that, right, Jer? 0.5%. 0.5% for year one, which is 2000. So you can get your, get your affairs in order. But it goes up if you're, it, it can go up, right? Maybe not in the first two, year. 2019 is going to be 2%. 2% per- for foreign owners, I believe. Yes. Mm. Or yeah. satellite families. How do we define a satellite family? One of the owners is a foreigner. So oh. that's where you get your st- stories of the student that lives in the million dollar. So there's no green card uh, uh, tax evasion. That's the, <laughs> that's the idea, right? Yeah. So name on title matters. Uh, yeah. this, for example, my wife and I are both on title at our home. We both have to make a declaration. Yeah. Because if she wasn't a citizen or whatever, that changes things. So there's a lot going into this. Uh, when we say that it rolls out over a couple different years, the 0.5% is for 2018. So mm-hmm. when you're filling out this declaration right now, it is not for the 2019 year. It's actually for last year. So, right. so last the year. clock is ticking. Yeah. Uh, what's the deadline to get this in? I think it was March 31st. Uh, so the tax rate will increase. It gives you time as well. They're saying like right now there's an exemption if you own a property that you're not living in that's a strata that does not allow rentals. Okay. That you're exempt from the tax. But it's only for the first two years. So you don't have to fill it out if your strata has zero rent. Oh, no, you still have to fill it out, and you don't have to pay the tax. The idea is that two years from now, if you're still not occupying it, a minimum of six months of the year. Oh, so if you're renting it out under, like, distress or whatever, like you've applied to strata for an exemption. Yeah, but let's say you own a condo that you just let sit vacant in a strata that does not allow a rental. Oh, I get what you're saying. I wonder if this actually, if this would open things up because of that, the whole distress under the strata property act that they can't limit rentals. If you're going through distress, you lose your job for some reason. Um, well, but if this tax would that. actually, you know, implicate that. Right. You know. Okay. So I think the news of the day really today, this week, why we're going live is that we received our notice in the mail to fill out our declaration. Every resident of BC, if you own property, you have to fill this out. It's not just if you're somebody who pays the tax, it's everyone. So the exercise today is let's find out what it's like to actually fill this out. So Matt and Jer are going to actually open their envelopes up and start filling it out. I wanted to play too, but my wife said I couldn't. <laughs> um, Rachel was worried that I wouldn't bring the tax form back. <laughs> that, that makes sense. Any, if anyone knows Jeff. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's the paperwork side of, of our relationship. So I, I got out our form last night and I was like, I'm taking to the city office. And she's like, not a chance. No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's go into our main sort of topic here, our main segment, and we're going to do this. Are you going to time us, Jeff? Are you going to be paying attention on the timer? I uh, do not No have... one said this is going to be timed. No, I... Oh, yeah, maybe. Well, I, I, can, a... I can do a little bit of... Yeah, we'll time. I, I think whoever finishes first gets a cookie. Um, <laughs> and... It's got a rough number on how long yeah. it takes. Is it five minutes or 20? Yeah, and, so... and we've got a few more people who have kind of hopped in since we started so um if you're listening to this and you have any questions about the speculation tax uh throw them in there or anything else because we need a question by the time we get to the question of the week (laughs) question of the week segment and again if you're just joining us jeff mcclennan jeremy ray i'm matt rabbins and we are recording what did we call this studio uh the sound studio (laughs) i thought you gave it a name (laughs) at remax advantage realty if you're one of our many realtor listeners, this brokerage happens to have a recording studio. Oh, getting in a little plug. A little plug. And we, we got an owner listening right now. Oh. So <laughs> well, well done, Matt Bravins. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's go into our main segment. Now you want to get nuts? Come on. Let's get nuts. You decide your own level of involvement. Well, I guess this is a case where we'll have to agree to disagree. I don't agree to that. Neither do I. Wrong. National debt. Wrong. Wrong. Advocate. Wrong. With that money, wrong. Lost. Wrong. 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 
Very nice words, but happens to be wrong. You're listening to Multiple Offers, a real estate show. <laughs> Again, never happens. <laughs> For those of you who are listening, not watching this live, uh, I just headbutted my microphone. <laughs> Jeff's wearing a hat. <laughs> oh my gosh, Jeff! All right, so you guys gonna open up your envelopes? We we have a starting time. Uh, we've been on for ten minutes and thirty seconds. I need a head start because Matt's already opened Mine's his. Mine's already. I broke okay. the seal. In three, two, hang on, one, go. I feel like this is like the worst like unboxing video ever. <laughs> so I just got this letter in the mail oh, from Jared the, actually the government. Didn't, didn't open his. He hasn't even he opened his envelope. He, and so actually, um, Jared's I don't know, breaking the law right now. I don't know if we should be showing this. Is a federal. <laughs> this is a federal offense. Opening someone else's yeah, that, mail. Your name isn't on that. <laughs> no, 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 that no. But you got permission, so it's fine. Uh, so I have two pieces of paper in here. So what do you got there? I have got uh, an information little brochure here. Yeah. And I have a single eight and a half by eleven that says "Declare Now." So. Okay. Requiring all property owners in the taxable regions to complete a declaration. Get ready. <laughs> you will need your declaration code, a letter ID, your address, and your social insurance number. The info sheet's super friendly, though. It seems like a short... Uh, people have been complaining that this is a big pain, the, filling this okay, out. Okay, well, the easiest way seems easy so to far. declare is to do so online. So uh, you probably won't have to pay it, happy face, but you happy do have face. to register... Sad face. It says right. It's got emojis on it's it. It's got emojis. <laughs> They're targeting the, the us millennials all the millennials younger, with with yeah. homes. What is it? Am I exempt? How will this solve BC housing's affordability crisis? Let's talk about that later. Okay. And what do I need to do? Read the letter. Keep your letter ID and declaration code handy. Have your social insurance number on hand. Don't share it with your live viewers. You'll need this to verify your identity and complete your declaration. Register your declaration. The easiest way is by visiting this website. Here we go. And we'll put that in the show notes. So while you guys get started, one thing I wanted to ask, do both of you and your spouse, so not Jer, because he's not on title, apparently, uh, but Matt, Liz and you are both on title, I assume. Correct. Correct. Did you get one or did you get two of those? We each got an envelope. So you each have to fill this out. Yeah. And then she's like, don't touch mine because if it goes missing. Oh, <laughs> so it's not just Rachel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, she didn't say don't touch mine. She said, yeah. uh, take this and put it somewhere and do it for me. <laughs> ah, I see. Yeah. I might be the Rachel in my family. That makes sense to me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Liz, Liz could be the Jeff. I think. Okay. So I am on the site. And what's There's, interesting about this is that you have to opt out rather than, like, everybody has to do this, whether you've lived in your home forever. So correct? by default, you're guilty. They'll probably just tax you if they never get the thing. Yeah, I think if you don't fill it out, you're going to get stuck with the tax. Yeah. So yeah. this is just, yeah, you do you're have opting six out. Years. You've yeah. got six years to go back if you didn't make your declaration and were charged. Yeah. So that's an option. But anyway, I, I'm so I'm on the first page here. I have two options. I want to submit a new declaration, or I want to change or continue an existing declaration. Right. All required fields will be marked in orange. Declaration uh, you, code. It says get ready. Declaration code, letter ID, property address, social insurance number. Yeah. I'll have to find that we, out. We've, we've had a couple comments so far. Yeah, go ahead. So, uh, Do they know these? these? Deb says, hi, Jeff. And for those listeners, De- Deb is your assistant. What the? <laughs> yeah. Hi, Deb. Hey, Deb, we're here too. Yeah. Thanks for She's watching. not saying hi to her bosses. And I got a big thumbs up from uh, Keith, one of the owners. So I think he must have appreciated Matt's plug. Ah, <laughs> yes. So you guys, you know, you do still, we are live. You need to talk. Oh, well, while we're, well, I'm while not going to interrupt your you. You were talking. I'm just saying okay. that I feel just, like I'm, I'm... I put in my declaration code and my letter ID. That was the first page. And now I'm on step two. Maybe Jeff can just do a play-by-play for the podcast listeners. Yeah, but this gives me no indication of how long currently, this is going to take. So currently, Matt is looking at the piece of paper. What best describes the owner? I'm an individual. So I could be a corporation, a trust, a partnership... When two or more people or corporations arrange to carry on business together. So that's not the case for me and my wife. We're not a partnership. We're individuals. Now, could you, fill, if I don't want to fill this out online, I didn't see any extra paperwork in the envelope. Do I have to go somewhere and get the paperwork or how does that it work? It says you can also declare by calling a toll free number. Oh, you, oh, it's a call in. Yeah. 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., seven days a week. Okay. 
translation services are available. So I, I said I'm an individual and I click next and now it's just, you know. Yeah. I'm thinking. trying to give you the lead here. Processing. Well, I'm just dead in the water because I don't have a SIN number. You don't? <laughs> you didn't come prepared? <laughs> you said we're not going to open the envelope. That's fair. That, that is, is fair. So you got to so, solve the problem. You need to like text so Jane. So if you're filling this out for your spouse and maybe <laughs> yeah. the property's in your spouse's name for whatever yeah. reason, um, totally legal, normal reasons, yeah, um, you're you might need that, or you're not going to be able to fill it out live on on your Facebook stream. So um, I, I feel like you need to solve the problem. I'm so this is this is part of my time that if you're a person doing that, this yeah. is real time. Yeah, trying to fill this out for your significant other. Yeah, who's busy working. Yeah. Um, you're, you're going to have to schedule that time in that you're going to have to try and get their social insurance number. Yeah. Well, what else <laughs> are we Who knows their spouse? Do yeah. you guys know your spouse's social insurance numbers? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> I bet Rachel knows yours. Um, nobody knows mine. I, I keep mine in my, in my phone because <laughs> I wouldn't remember it. <laughs> yeah. uh, so I clicked that a while ago when I told you I'm an individual. Mm-hmm. Still processing. Like you're stuck in a loading screen. It's just loading. Okay. So this is a high-speed website that the government has provided <laughs> to us. Or maybe we've crashed we've it crashed because it. all of our live <laughs> viewers. I, I, I got maybe the best comment so far. Uh, Stephanie Arnold says, it takes a special kind of real estate nerd to watch a live video of three people filling out a form <laughs> for a tax <laughs> exemption. <laughs> Clearly, we've found our tribe. <laughs> Thanks, Steph. <laughs> Thanks, Steph. But you know what? It doesn't just take real estate nerds because, according to this form, ninety-nine percent of British Columbians are going to have to or going to be exempt. Yeah. So you're all going to do the same thing I'm doing, and so far I've been sitting here for three minutes. Watch. Hey, did it just changed. you got through? Uh, yeah. Were you getting the spinny the spinny wheel? The spinny but it wheel. was. Yeah. yeah. Actually, no. The page reloaded, and it's still the same page. Okay. Let's try doing it again. Okay, I'm on page three. Residency. Are you a Canadian citizen or permanent <laughs> resident? Yes. <laughs> Were you a resident of BC as of December 31st? Yes. Was at least 50% of your total household income reported on Canadian income tax returns? Yes. This sounded like such a good idea when we pitched it. <laughs> Enter your date of birth. Don't tell anyone. Uh, oh We don't... We don't tell people Matt's birthday? Well, it's July 15th, but I'm not going to tell you the year. You can guess when, you, when I was born in the 90s. You, you weren't born in the want, 90s? <laughs> you'd think you'd want people to know, because people usually think that you're younger than I know, they are. think I'm so probably, probably born, want, they probably think I'm born in the 90s. He's an, he's an 80s kid. Because he's, he's thin and he has a baby face. Yeah, and all my hair. And he didn't, and he didn't grow a beard like the other two of us <laughs> in order to try and to look, look older. older. <laughs> don't dodge my hair comment. There's two children that are older than our children. Yeah. Was this property your principal residence? Yes. Jerry, have you just given up at this point? <laughs> I, you know what? I just don't have. I, I could. Oh, it hasn't. Has it asked you for your SIN number yet? Yeah, I put it in. So it's right away. So I mean, I could load the website, but you, you could that use, might just slow him down. You could use Matt's SIN <laughs> number and see how that goes. I'll try and see if I can beat Matt to what, it. What else do our listeners need to know about speculation tax? Uh, that ninety nine percent of BC residents will be exempt from the tax. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I I think it's it's important. I mean, it's so we're filling this out right now for they're asking questions about 2018. Yeah. Um, and because these things haven't quite been filed yet, uh, I guess there could be an issue if you're buying a property that potentially was foreign owned. Mm-hmm. Um, because if tax man hasn't caught up with that seller and they sell their property and they've left town, left the country, whatever, yeah. um, is that bill coming? Because that bill is associated with that property. I'm done. That, that the whole thing. You're done. I'm done. Okay, so 19 minutes. No, we started at 10 minutes. So nine minutes. So this, this is not the big deal. No, but if that's if you are an owner, resident, the easy version. Okay, who else needs to fill out the form? Well, people who have like a rental. They can still get an exemption. Yes, but, they have, but then you have to prove that it's rented. And I don't know what that looks like. Because they don't want vacant homes. Correct. Okay. So it's okay if you own it but don't live there. But if you yeah. check that box, I don't know how many questions come next. Could we and go in and saying. just make a fake one and see see what happens? Uh, uh, I'd have to have another ID number, I think, to get in and start messing okay. around stuff. So that would be fraudulent. Yeah. Well, um, as long as you don't hit submit, I think it's okay <laughs> just to explore. Isn't Was it, it like you fill out a couple answers and then press next? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it might be hard to edit undo that one. Okay. 
if you are declaring on behalf of the owner, please complete the following form and submit it. Oh, no, chair. is that me? Authorization or cancellation of a representative. Mm, yeah. That sounds like another form. Yeah. Uh, so it says I, uh, I did it. So it took nine minutes. Um, there weren't any difficult questions. Like I didn't have to go chasing down any other information. So this is just kind of an annoying thing you have to do, but it's really not that big of a deal. Yeah, I, said, I was, I was said, worried that they were going to want to have like, you know, your hydro bill show that there's been power consumption at the house. There's like, so, so there's newer, a bit of an honor system. Yeah. yeah. How do you know if you're actually there? Yeah. As the most basic thing as an owner occupier, they made it easy. It's yeah. Are you the owner? Yes. yes. Is this your principal residence? Yes. yes. You're done. Now, you do have to give a phone number and an email address. It's yeah. required. So, yeah. that, so I put that stuff in. But yeah, it's pretty straightforward. It was a bit slow there loading. If I hadn't had that delay, it probably right. would have taken five minutes yeah, and even not less. nine. Yeah. Right? So they're going the to the need some, some policing, though, with this to actually figure out. Because if it's that cut and dry and they're not like, okay, we trust you. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> um, like, our neighbor's going to report? Is that. You can know, have like lynch mobs going out and sort of seeing like, oh, I bet you if there's a neighbor who's annoyed, mind you, you can. How do you know what they've declared? Yeah, I just met, I was going to say if there's a neighbor that's annoyed with the tenant, but you don't you get an exemption as long as there's a tenant in there. Yeah. So there. Yeah. If a place sits completely empty like eight months of the year. Right. And they drop in just for the summer or something. I don't think there's any way of as a citizen going. Let me check if they paid their tax. This was a much bigger problem. For me, when I lived in Vancouver, the, actually, problem's the wrong word because it didn't it didn't affect me in any way, shape, or form. But vacancy was a bigger problem. Like it was more prevalent, I guess is what I'm yeah. trying to say. Like when I'd walk my dog around Tisdale Park, there was a whole whole row of townhouses that were brand new that I'd walk by, and they they'd been built for a couple years, and that front row was all empty. There was nobody in any of them. Just empty all the time. Yeah. Like, I, I think, I don't think New West has a big vacancy rate, would be my guess. That's not some. I don't hear that. Uh, I don't really hear people complain about that too and, much. And, like, when you show downtown, like in English Bay, a lot of times the listing agent will brag, oh, the owner here actually only comes for the summer. And yeah, is so it's out, a quiet is, floor. Yeah, you, you, get, you get that a lot down there. Hmm. I've never once in New West heard, like, oh, this is their summer home. <laughs> people, people could think that about the Peninsula Tower, maybe. No, yeah. light, no lights, not a lot of lights going on in that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, quite so possibly. Aragon's going to be paying lots of, I guess, doesn't, it's, there's exemptions for that. There too, is an exemption right? for the developers, yeah. yeah. Do you guys want to talk more about some of that stuff? I, you want to talk about what's, what this is fixing? And is it actually going to fix anything, or is it just a tax? Yeah, I, I think that's a good... Like, that's in my brochure. You guys don't need... Let me tell you what the government says. Okay. How will this tax help solve BC's housing, affor- housing affordability crisis? That's a great question. Yeah. It's going to target foreign and domestic speculators who own homes in BC but don't pay tax here. Ooh. So it's going to help your, make houses more affordable for you by going after making people pay tax. They don't pay tax here. It's going to turn empty homes into good housing for people. So I don't know that this is trying to fix buying affordability. It's trying to make more rental units. Yeah, though. put an so, empty home available on the rental market. And then yeah. third, their third bullet point is raise revenue that will go to supporting affordable housing. That's nonsense because the estimated revenue they're going to get from this is really not that much. Well, if 99% of people are going to be exempt, yeah, it's going to be low, right? Yeah, their projections that they came out with when they launched this yeah. have been revised and are considerably lower. Right. And also all their projections show that it's mostly going to be collected from B- BC uh, residents. So on, yes. their, on their website, the speculation and vacancy tax is a key measure in tackling the housing crisis in major urban centers in BC, where home prices and rents have skyrocketed out of reach for many people. So they on the website, they're saying... So they're, they're saying it's going to help prices. I, I can't see that. And it says... And another interesting thing, I guess, they're ta- taking action because people who live and work in BC deserve an affordable place to call home. Right. Now, is this all of BC? No. So where where it, does it where metro, does it end? Isn't it Metro Vancouver taxable regions? Let's click on that link. All right. And the so. exempted places like Bowen um, and Sunshine Coast or Gulf Islands. Yeah, originally they had them on the list, and that was revised. So uh, municipalities within Metro Vancouver Regional District, 
excluding Bowen Island, Village of Lions Bay, Electoral Area A. Oh, I love Electoral <laughs> Area A. <laughs> And including UBC and the UBC Endowment Lands. Yeah. So all of Metro Vancouver. So then outside of Metro Vancouver, City of Abbotsford, District of Mission, City of Chilliwack. So that's in the Fraser Valley area. Right. And then we've got City of Kelowna, West Kelowna, and then Nanaimo and Lansville. Hmm. So I think a good question for is, a tax expert would be... How did be, Victoria not get on the list? How do... Victoria is exempt or not exempt? It's... No, it's exempt. It doesn't apply unless it falls within the district of Lansville, because I don't understand Because it's that the capital. <laughs> yeah, that's only, hold on a second. How do you put Kelowna on there and Mission in Abbotsford and yeah. not Victoria? Huh. Unless I don't understand what this district is, because... District A. Yeah. District 9. Is that what it was? District 19? District 9? That was a good movie. No, no. Is it District 5? I'm thinking of the Mighty Ducks. No. I have no idea what Matt's talking about right now. Yeah. All right. Mighty Ducks 1. I remember the flying V. Yeah, before they got jerseys, they wore like crummy t-shirts with tape oh, on them that said like D5. And they weren't called the They Mighty were so Ducks. bad they didn't have a team name. They were just District 5. Right. Yeah, okay. and Emilio shows up at the first practice. And he's like, District 5! Yeah. This is a great <laughs> tax conversation. <laughs> um, okay, cool. Well, why don't... I think in the show notes, we should put in some... Uh, Oh, just a second. I lost Wi-Fi. I'm Somebody else shocked talked. if Victoria isn't on this list. How did? What kind of political leverage did they have that Kelowna is on the list and Victoria is not? I think you answered your own question. They're the government. Well, those are the regions that apply. Okay. okay. Uh, and then there's the... You had some other questions, Jeff? Um, no, we, d- we don't have a question from the audience of the week, but I am prepared. I have a question for you. Guys. I thought you had some talking points. Yeah. Um, well, no, I've just got to talk. Uh, most of the stuff I wanted to talk about, we, we actually already covered. So I, I'm happy to move on to question of the week. If that's something you guys are ready to do. Uh, I wanted to look at one thing here and it is about all the different people this applies to. Okay. Because there's the exemptions and it's, it's quite a long list. And um, it where did, here's the list. The following exemptions are available for individuals. So there's quite a lot. This is why it becomes shocking to me. Like how, yeah. Like who does this actually apply to? But if you're if you're maybe listening to this because you think the tax is going to apply to you, you're upset about how it applies to you. Make yeah. sure you double check because there are quite a few ways that you can be exempt because of scenarios that force the property to be vacant. Mm -hmm. So we've got one, there's principal residence. So obviously it's not vacant occupied by a tenant. You're good. You can't live in the residence because it's uninhabitable. Yeah. So for example, if you've got like a stop work order or no no occupancy permit, Right. right. Secondary residence close to a medical treatment facility. I hadn't read that yet. That's actually thoughtful. Right. Just bought or inherited the property. So it gives you, so that's helpful for us to know if you're going to buy a property and it's going to sit vacant for six months because you're transitioning that's between two homes. That's going to come into play with people we deal with a lot. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I just learned something new that's good for our business. Yeah. Uh, separation or divorce. Hmm. Bankruptcy. Recent death of owner. Property is in a trust. Property has rental restrictions. Property is a strata hotel. Property includes a licensed child daycare. There is no residence on the property. Seems like a reasonable reason to exempt you from the tax. <laughs> like there's no house. <laughs> there's no, there's no house. <laughs> Why don't you get a tent? <laughs> we reserve comments on that, <laughs> considering the costs of rent in Vancouver. Do squatters count? <laughs> I'm letting them stay there. I should be exempt. Uh, so those are all of those. And uh, I'm, I'm quite curious here. Property has rental restrictions because we talked about that. Yeah. Um, so when a bylaw prevents the owner from renting out in a manner that would allow a rental exemption, all owners of a property are exempt for 2018 and 19 tax years only. Okay. So if they take effect in 2020, here we are already in 2019. Yeah. That means if you are listening and you have a home that otherwise sits vacant and you don't keep a tenant and you want to put in a tenant, you've either got to get a tenant in before... June of 2020. Yeah. Or sell it. Right. Before then. 
or pay half a percent tax. What will it be next year? Two percent. Two. Is it? I thought two percent was just for foreign. For okay. foreign. Yeah. Yeah. So it would still only be half a percent. I read something. Is there any in between? Like, it, is it just half a percent or two percent, and that's it, or is there like a Th- sliding? That's what scale? it says on here. Okay. Yeah. Half a percent on the property's assessed value. Yeah. And then the tax rate is two percent for foreign satellite owners, half a percent for Canadian citizens or permanent residents who are not members of a satellite family. That's all. That's all it says. It's pretty cut and dry. Okay. There was something I read one place about how there's a, a threshold of like $400,000 that you could get a rebate for. But I, I searched and searched and searched and couldn't find confirmation on that. Right. But I saw it in a news piece, I think. Yeah. But I mean, the, the government websites, when they provide information, they say, we're giving you information. They don't actually give you all the detail. Yeah. It's, it's like hidden in their legislation. Right. And I think a lot of these folks who write the articles that we read actually... Mm-hmm. They, they read the re- the legislation. They don't just go and summarize the government website like we're doing. Yeah. What do you guys do? You guys have any predictions on you know if so the people that this does the tax does apply to? Well, let's call it like the point five percent people. Yeah. Um, and it's it's fully just a secondary house. Like you hang out in Vancouver for a couple months when it's not raining, and then you're somewhere you know somewhere else most of the year. Um, do you just eat it up? Or, and say, I'll just pay my 0.5 and just deal with it. Um, I think on the lower end stuff, probably, because if you're just, if you're choosing not to rent it out anyway, there's a ton of income you're already leaving on the table. Now, if you get into these mega houses that are sitting vacant, I mean, that, that could be a significant amount of money. It's just the price to have that nice place in that nice area. And it's near that restaurant you like when you fly into Vancouver, just because you want steak from there. Yeah. (laughs) Well, and I think it's fair like if it's if it's valued at eight hundred thousand mm-hmm. dollars, half a percent on that is four thousand dollars. Yeah, right. So it's not a no. It's not until we're getting into like eight million dollars that you're like, well, mind you, if you can afford eight million dollars, <laughs> yeah, you might you might burn forty grand. Yeah. You know that you don't have to let somebody else use the home, yeah. right? But if it's an eight hundred thousand dollar home and you you do a four thousand dollar. Uh, tax every year on that you go well that's just the 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 price to play yeah and so from an owner's perspective you just accept that you eat it fine what's the government's case for the whole reason why they have this tax is to discourage we can take your four thousand dollars what one is to discourage that yeah and it's fine if you choose to do it that way that's your right and we're going to tax you four thousand dollars and we're going to take that four thousand dollars and use it towards affordable housing now how are they going to spread that across the province who knows right they probably just put it into a pool like patrick johnston was saying on our last episode about taxes yeah yeah and and how much revenue are they actually going to collect and i forget now and maybe while you guys talk i'm going to try to find some numbers about this because yeah. I feel like it's actually not that much revenue they're going to bring in. Mm-hmm. And then what's the net revenue after all of the nonsense they have to for, go for, through for to this. collect this? Yeah. To, to 99% of people. A massive yeah. advertising campaign to tell every resident every single year for the rest of our lives as occupants yeah. to fill this out, to collect how much money. I think the, I think the funds just pool into, you know, it might go towards rental housing initiatives, um, different things like that. But any effect on like what they have stated on their website to make for housing more affordable for people. Yeah. There's no consequence on, on house. So prices. you think this is just a drop in the bucket? It's just an extra tax. Yeah. That's, that's my thought. I don't even think it, it deters people. Now, Matt, if people wanted to go back and check out the episode with Patrick Johnstone, what do you remember what episode number that was? That was 38. That was 38. And that's where we got into your, um, Oh, why am I property free? taxes? Property taxes and, tax and your assessments. assessments. That's the so. Word I so was people, for. yeah, people thought their assessments were high. So then yeah. we tried to relate that to property taxes. Yeah, it could uh, stop. It could stop the demand if people were buying properties to use as as Airbnbs, if that's what they were purchasing it for, because that might not be the rental might not work out where right. where they could they could get that exemption because it's technically rented. Yep. Um, but I feel like that's even a pretty small segment that wouldn't really affect. Like lowering a little bit of that demand on 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 housing and in, in you know in the region in the area, I don't think it's enough to really affect affect the prices. That's, yeah. that's just my stance, though. Affecting prices, I don't see that being very likely. I'm I'm more of a uh, well, that was the rally cry, right? That that these all these foreign buyers are buying these houses. They're just properties are all sitting vacant. Um, there's not enough properties for me to purchase because they're holding on to them and they're vacant. I mean, that well, was kind of part of partially where this came from was this crisis for, for yeah, affordability. And, and also there aren't enough homes to rent, like to 
really kind of push people into look if you've got a home you need to rent it out but i agree with you i think it i don't think it changes it's, things. it's a tax yeah take some of that property transfer tax put that towards affordable housing <laughs> you mean the number one source of income in bc <laughs> for the government <laughs> just, just a thought yeah matt did you find what you were looking for i still haven't found what i'm looking for Okay, well, why don't we get into question of the week, and you can add an addendum if we, if you, we need you to. you too there for you. Thank you, Jeremy. Uh, I'm, I'm disappointed because the, the figures were disappointing. You look at this, and you go, we're going to all this effort to bring in how much revenue? Drop in the bucket. Yeah. You know, to penalize primarily BC residents right. and a handful of foreign buyers. Makes me mad. So Matt's a fan of the speculation tax. <laughs> <laughs> it's a waste of paper. <laughs> Okay, so, uh, all right, no numbers. That's too bad. Maybe we'll put it in my blog. You want to play our bumper? Where are we going next? Question of the week. Sure, I can do that. Check out the big brain on bread. How's it working out for you? What? Being clever. Who knows where thoughts come from? They just appear. You're listening to Multiple Offers, a real estate show. Got the question, Jeff? Yes. Yeah, so, uh, unfortunately, we did not get a question uh, from our live stream experiment, but I have what I thought was a pretty interesting question. So, I was at a party over the weekend with Jer. I, Jer I was there. Um, and we were talking to Todd Connor, who is a realtor in our office. And he said, So, what do you think? If a Buyer buys a property fully intent on moving in, pays the GST, and then decides, oh, you know what? Actually, my plans have changed, and I'm moving, and then flips the property. Does the new buyer have to pay GST? So I, I heard this one. Did Todd go through it with you? No, no. You, you told me about it, but I think the way you've... <laughs> Did, have we had this conversation? I haven't. You, yeah. you mentioned no. it, but the way you framed it, I don't think is really clear to the listener. Okay. Uh, so, so well, let's give some context. So, so yeah. part of what you're saying is that the purchase, the property the buyer has purchased is brand new. Yes. And that's why GST applies. Because you don't pay GST on, on homes re, that on have resale. been occupied. You pay GST on the yeah. first time it's bought. So this has probably been purchased pre-sale? Correct. With the intent of moving in and occupying. Yes. And then follows through with the purchase. The seller or the buyer did pay the GST. So buys it from the developer, pays GST to the government, does not move in. Yes. And now he's going to flip it. Yeah. Well, he's going to sell it. Plans changed and he's like, "Uh uh-oh, I I I got a new job or I got a divorce or whatever and I got to sell. I don't plan on living here. I'm going to sell it. Has not moved in So is the dispute that they're trying to get that back and make the new person pay for it? Because the government's collecting it. They've collected it. They they shouldn't care. So this is what happened. The government collected it. Then the new buyer buys, doesn't pay the GST, and then gets told, where's our GST? Buyer's opinion is GST has already been paid. I was given the paperwork. Yeah, they can't double dip. Actually, they can, which is the really scary. (laughs) (laughs) Because the letter of the law, and this... It'll be interesting. We should come back to this title in a transfer? few months. Uh, uh, n- no, title, title did didn't not transfer, transfer. But they took the GST, and they're not rebating it. But the thing is, GST has nothing to do, according to the government, with whether or not GST was paid before. It's not a, hey, one time. It's, has the home been occupied? Nonsense. It is insane to me that the government expects GST twice. Yeah. Yeah. Is that, I wonder if that's like pre sale. And t- title must have transferred. They're not. Why would he pay GST unless title? He's gone through that. It, you're I, may, talking about I, may, an, I may have that wrong. Yeah, title you're talking about. An, you're talking yeah. about. Because like, otherwise, it's, it's an assignment. In yeah, which you're, case, yeah, you're right. In, in yeah. which case, obligation for GST is on the assigner. Yeah. Ner. Anyways. It's, and my it, understanding is that Todd's uh, people are fighting it. Like they're looking into talking to a lawyer and getting, but as it stands right mm. now, the government expects to get paid. Our again. government is horrible. <laughs> they could be listening. Yeah, go ahead and listen. Do you, do you really think that that is a reasonable way of operating? Yeah. GST has been paid, and you just want to go collect it again because the person didn't move in. Yeah. There's, and there's, So go have a sleepover there. Like, how do you, it doesn't make sense that 
Well, you you have to stay there for a certain amount of time, I believe, to be GST. Um, it was it's it didn't all the new didn't wear off enough. Yeah, yeah, it still has the new house. Smell. It still has the new house smell. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, because you can go and uh, the way it works, like if you build a new house and you know you move into it and you sell it within a year. Yeah, we 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 have a comment from a listener, friend of the show, Stephanie Barrett, uh, oh, hi, Steph. just jumped in, hey, Steph. and uh, she says if the original purchaser slept in the property for one night, uh, she made this comment before your comment, Jer. So you guys are on the <laughs> same page. Uh, would that have made it a resale property? And that's an excellent question. Um, I don't know if there's a minimum amount of time. I mean, I always thought it was just the first buyer has to pay GST. That That's how it works in my brain. And I, I think it's important that our listeners know that this is something that they really need to delve into. It's not just was GST yeah. paid. One thing I've always been very uh, honest with myself about yeah. is I do not have – a super strong understanding of the the new home GST tax law. Right. It is a moving target. Rebates that are available, other things that go with it. It's not it's not exactly 5%. Yeah. So I have always just kind of deferred that type of conversation. You mean like when your client is like talk to a professional. How do I get out of this or how do no, I No, if they're like I'm, it, I'm buying new, I... what's the tax? I'll yeah. say who's the lawyer who you're going to use for the transaction? Yeah. Speak to that person. Get get the specifics from an expert. This on isn't the a math tax. question. Yeah. Yet. So so I I have a basic understanding, but because of situations like this, I tend to kind of remove myself and say you need to make sure you speak to an expert. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. So Some, the idea of having a sleepover. Oh. Uh, sometimes I mean developers don't sell units. Buildings occupied. They still have the unit. What if like the government usually they just want to have their their GST collected. One one time, so it's either yeah. and they're just putting that on. Cool, we own this property. Titles transferred. We own the property. Yeah, but we're not we're not paying it, so we're letting you know when we're reselling this unit, even though a title has been registered. Um, yeah, because what if they they could just rent it out? Well, usually the loophole is that somebody occupies occupies it right. for a year yeah. and then sells it, so GST won't apply at all. Yes, there's no GST that's because the, it's now a resale yeah. product. That's why a lot of builders are. Oh, I built this for myself, this <laughs> home I've lived in for one year. Yeah. The owner builder. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, no, I just built it for myself. And now you can have it. No GST. Cause I've been here for a year. So usually the game is to stay there for a year. So there's absolutely zero GST that's paid to the government. Yeah. The government yeah. is getting their GST once. What, how do they possibly think that they need it twice? Like imagine that, that this guy could buy it and let it sit empty for 11 months if he chose to. Right. Never move in turn around and sell it, or let's say 10 months, turn around and sell it, and the next guy buys it within the 12-month window. The government collects tax at, like, month one and month 12. But had that guy just left it vacant for two more months, the government would collect no tax. So talk to an accountant. No tax. Is that because if a developer leaves a place vacant for, like, Five years, you could still have to pay GST. Oh, when I say he leaves it vacant for 12 months and then the government yeah. gets no tax, yeah. he, he has to sort of play along the game that says, I, see what you're I was living there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Has to, has to declare that it was his primary residence. Yeah. They, they, you know, which yeah. we've seen all sorts of different ways of people manipulating that. This is not a tax law conversation. Talk to your expert. Yep. <laughs> Fair enough. All right, guys. Well, I think that's probably going to do it for today. Our, our first live experiment. The um, I I had meant to say this earlier in the show. We are still for those really keen listeners. We are still trying to track down an inspector to have on the show. That's right. Um, but we had a few little scheduling hiccups, and also this came up, and it felt very timely. And we we wanted to be multiple offers. The tax show. We're we're just going to be doing tax episodes from now on. I'm out. Um, but um, we are still working on having a home inspector on. We've got a couple guys that we're chasing, and I think Matt might have uh, might have got one down. We've got some pretty good windows of time to work with to, to yeah. schedule him in. But we don't know exactly when it is, so if you want to make sure you hear it and you think it's interesting, uh, please subscribe to the podcast. If you have been enjoying the podcast, um, please leave us a five-star review on iTunes or wherever you download us from. You can find us on iTunes, Google Play, Podbean, wherever you get your podcast from. Um, and thank you guys very much. Uh, I have been Jeff McLennan at realestatenewwest.com, and with me is Matt Brabens and still his sidekick, Jeremy Ray, <laughs> at thenewwestguys.com. 
That's our show. Jody Squires is watching. Remember when we invited him on and then never, oh, yeah. never had Jody on the show? <laughs> we were supposed to get an update on what's happening out in the yeah. the valley. Yeah. Sorry, we invited Jody Squires on the show? We totally invited Jody on the show. Hi, Jody. Hey, buddy. And uh, he said yes, and then, and then I just didn't. saw his name pop up, and I'm like, oh, we never had Jody on the show. Wow, that was me. <laughs> we should still have Jody on the show because yeah. he's awesome. Want to know what's going on? Yeah. I don't know Jody. Have you never met him? Say hi. Hi, Jody. He's, he's, from, he's a newfie, right? I think so, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, Jody's awesome. Yeah, he's uh, he's great. We'll just have to maybe have the sensor Feel button. Un- unfil- <laughs> un- <laughs> Ready. Unfiltered. Yeah, Change that's it why to, I don't uh, know Jody. Yeah. PG rated. Yeah. So, live, how'd we do? I don't know. You got all the technology, is it? Well, I uh, found out that I couldn't watch our live feed and contribute to the comments. That was frustrating. The bumpers thing was a little, little tense, too. Yeah. Not having that work. Did that only happen once? Well, it, it, it's having trouble playing. It's confused because it thinks it's trying to play audio through Facebook. Oh, so it's cutting out the I audio see. from my music source. Hmm. Yeah, the Facebook Live is dominating the, the queue. It's moving to the top it's of the hierarchy. Now, nothing from your computer is going into the soundboard, right? The soundboard is just going out? or is My it, computer it's sends its audio signal into the, into the mixer. It's probably because you're sending it from the so browser. So could that have affected the recording at all? What do you mean? Everything you hear in your headphones yes. is what's on our recording. Right, but the there would have been no it screwing up during the actual recording. Like the bumpers are screwed up, but you didn't have technical difficulties when we were just talking. No, no, different no. computer. Yeah, I think it's probably the browser was pulling audio. Like if you had though, if you were just playing those on a separate, like just as a file, it probably would have both both streams. Yeah, going. I did put them in separate windows, but that wasn't enough. No, it just was was confused on. Uh, hmm. Now, now, if that was an Apple computer, oh, you wouldn't just get you wouldn't get anything because it wouldn't plug into the board. <laughs> so, are you guys jealous? My uh, speculation tax declaration is uh, complete. I still don't have a sin number. <laughs> so. Not nothing back what's, from James. How's my clock? What's my clock ticking at? Uh, Jerry, it's been uh, it's been an hour, thirty six minutes. Okay, yeah. Has anyone did anyone comment that they've done it? No one's. Everyone's just putting this thing off. I don't it's, know if anybody. We didn't it's ask. On a table. It came in the mail like it's yeah, on a table. yesterday. Yeah, I just got it mine says, yesterday. It says action required. It's very serious. And in multiple languages. Couple. Yeah. Couple. Yeah. Well, anyway, that was pretty good. So are we going to do this again next week? Are we going to live it? I want to try out that cool camera Keith has. I don't know if we try that out next week. But yeah, I think we should. Unless we're doing the inspector because we've got to figure out a four-person oh, yeah. camera then we gotta, setup. Yeah, we need multicam. Yeah. Film school. Film and school. yeah, definitely inspector next week. Yeah. All right, you got to get right, up guys. and go turn off this live thing. Yeah. See you, Facebook. Thanks for listening. Whoa. <laughs>